Hello, I'm Mark Russell, Program Coordinator for Truck and Coach Apprenticeship here at Fanshawe College in the Z Building as part of an extension to the main campus. Uh, we are standing in the northeast corridor. Uh, directly above me is a exit sign leading out into the parking lot. Behind me is the truck shop entrance doors allocated as Z1089, one being the number on the main floor and if it's allocated with a two, then it's any of the classrooms that are on the second floor. Uh, you can see on the truck shop door, there is a notice based on PPEs or personal protective equipment that we need to adhere to when we're navigating through the truck shop into the different lab areas. Um, so no food or drink is permitted beyond this point. Safety glasses are mandatory. Clear vision only or yellow vision for enhancing with fluorescent lights. Um, and again, you should, depending upon personal preference and the risk, you should be wearing hearing protection if need be. We also have to wear uh, green patch safety shoes uh, to make sure that our feet are completely protected. So we're gonna take a look at the truck shop and the other labs within the truck shop. So we'll navigate through that as we continue on. So here we are standing in Z1089. Uh, within this room, 1089, there is different allocations of classrooms. There is 1089-1, 1089 1089-2, 1089 and 1089-3. Those classrooms, as I introduce them, are for different types of work for different areas uh, uh, that will be instructed to you while you're here at the college. Behind me immediately is the truck shop, and it is allocated as 1095. To your right, or my immediate left, is the engine's teardown area. So in the engine's teardown area, we take a look at all the requirements within the curriculum and within the technician programs uh, for the mechanical aspect of the uh, engine's running and running teardown areas. So within these areas, depending on the level of instruction, so for an example, in level one, we're doing short block assemblies, which includes the crankcase and the, uh, all the components related to the crankcase and measurements and inspection procedures. So students will completely disassemble the bottom end of an engine, pull all the pistons out, pull the crank out, measure and inspect the bearings, reassemble it, and then check for their assembly procedures after they're finished. So for an example, in level two, we do uh, live engines. So it's a running engine that we work with and we do uh, top sets um, and we do more valve train work in the level two instruction area within apprenticeship programs. Uh, in the level three, it's a teardown which encompasses basically fundamentals of the level one stuff from the bottom end, incorporating the level two stuff uh, of the top end and the bottom end. And then in level three, it's a running engine that's inclusive of Jake brakes on the top end, um, a running, uh, usually 10 plus liter engine. Uh, so it's something that we would typically see or technicians would typically see in transport truck chassis configurations out there on the highway today and in, in the industry. So they're working on setting valves and injectors and then of course, uh, any other related components in the bottom end of the engine. So they start with a live engine and they finish up with a live engine. So there's a lot of good training that happens down here in this teardown, teardown area. There are some older engines and there's newer, newer engines, but no matter how we look at it, an engine is an engine. So within the room 1089, uh, there is also a transmission teardown area where they work on standard transmission, six speeds, uh, 10 speeds, double counter shaft transmissions, uh, rear ends, um, power dividers, uh, automatic transmission. So for an example, here's an Allison 3000 series transmission behind me. It's a functional pneumatic cutaway that's used for training. And you can see there's other transmissions in the background. That's usually done in the level three um, apprenticeship program or in the level two technician program. So the orientation of this classroom, Z1089, is the hydraulics lab. So we'll go ahead and take a quick look at the hydraulics lab. 
So now within the classroom 1089-1, which is a hydraulics lab, this is where hydraulic related lab work is done on interactive training boards. Uh, there is also the element of uh, doing repairs on uh, hose ends and application of the different types of ends. We also do pneumatic training in here also as part of the curriculum in uh, the truck and coach program. So this lab is set up for that particular style of work. So we're standing in the shop 1089, and you can see the room number that's behind me is Z1089-2. Uh, so we've looked at the designation of the different rooms. This one here happens to be the electrical room. So this electrical room um, is going to house all of the tools and components and stuff that we're looking at when we're studying electrical systems. Let's have a look. So now within the electrical room here, 1089-2, uh, there's different things that we have in here. For an example, the demonstrator light board, so we can do some training on here to take a look at series and parallel circuits. And then hooking up different lighting, for example, incandescent light bulbs compared to LED light bulbs and how the power differences are there based on the resistance within that circuit. Um, there are different training boards within here also. We do have a cabinet within this room and in 1089 that houses all the meters and test equipment that we would use for doing any requirements within the lab setting. Um, so this is the home base for the electrical and then we go out and work on the chassis or we do bench work here uh, working either on the boards, on breadboards, on components or even maybe disassembling alternators and then retesting them on the alternator test bench. So we have an alternator test bench that does output testing on it so we can determine whether an alternator is any good or not before we start with it and then of course test it after we finish. And one of the things that I like to ensure is that if we start with a good component and it's functioning that we end up with a good component and it's functioning. That ensures that the student repaired it correctly and understood what he had done to make that component function again. So now still within 1089, we are looking at this room here, which is 1089-3 behind me, and it's our engine's running room. Okay, so within that engine's running room, students will be doing running engine practice service procedures. So let's go have a look. So now within 1089-3, uh, the engine's running area. So again, within this running area, students will be working on different things like doing top sets, um, in, uh, injector sets, uh, maybe even pulling a head off, doing maybe cam timing, depends on where the instructor is taking that particular class that day. So behind me here, you can see there's uh, a Cummins engine over here that has a water dyno on it. So we can do dyno testing to determine brake horsepower output, and then we can actually do load testing on it for prolonged periods of time if we needed to do that type of work. In the past, we have done dyno cell work for outside companies that are looking to do research projects, and then we set this room up entirely for that purpose of doing that uh, research and development on that particular uh, product uh, with an engine here that, and again, our facility can support. Um, so within here, there's a lot of different engines, types and styles. There's internationals we have down here. There's Cummins engines down here, Mac engines down here, Volvo engines down here, Caterpillar engines down here. Uh, the Volvo, if I haven't mentioned it already, D-Deck uh, engines right from D-Deck 2, 3, 4. And I think the current one that we have is the, yes, it's the D-Deck 4. I thought we were into the 5, but not as of yet. So there's a lot of different things that do happen down here. Uh, there is overhead rails, you can see in the background, the orange rails supply our fuel down here, which is turned on by an instructor. It can be requested by a student. And then when those fuel rails are turned on, the overhead ventilation systems uh, in the background here automatically come on to make sure that we are evacuating any of the gases in this room so that we can all run these engines and still work in a good, clean, safe environment. Okay, we'll take a look at the orientation of this particular classroom, which is the main truck shop, which is Z1095. So we're now within the truck shop, which is 1095, Z1095, and we have all of our trucks uh, parked in the shop here, and then each truck has 
uh, particular items around it that can also assist with the lab. So one of the things that you can see just behind me here is that we have some stuff hanging above the truck, which allows us to have lighting, it allows us to have hydro source, and it also allows us to have an air source or pneumatic control for some tools, uh, or pneumatic supply for some tools. So all of the trucks that we have down here are being used for suspension, steering, and brakes, electronics on the engines, electronics on the chassis, Anything related to the chassis is what usually happens in 1095. So within each bay in 1095, we have control over the exhaust also from overhead reels that can come down, can connect to a single exhaust on the back of the vehicle, a single under the vehicle, or even dual stacks depending upon application of that particular style of truck that's in the shop. We have them in the through bays also, and they are also in Z1089 in the transmissions and the engine teardown, running teardown area that uh, also allows us to have extra ventilation in the event we need to start something up or we're doing some grinding or cleaning or welding or whatever the case may be. So we are in 1095 on the northeast wall and surrounding me is the electrical test equipment that we use for doing on chassis and on bench testing for starters, alternators and any related electrical stuff on the chassis. So we have AVRs here, we also have battery chargers here and we have load, um, pardon me, uh, battery packs here for putting them on and boosting trucks or running uh, starters on the bench. So this is where we keep all this stuff and we try to keep it here so that we know exactly where it is and it gets returned here at the end of each lap. So here we are in 1095 and one of the things that we're doing here in 1095 is on chassis work. So we're doing related, uh, any chassis repairs that have to be done, cab, frame, chassis, brake, steering, suspension, any things like that. We also have an air brake training module board where we can turn this on, we can monitor wheel speed, we can take a look at the function of the ABS, we can hook up our ATA connector to make sure that we have uh, a method of connecting to it and determining whether there is a problem within any of the systems or components within this uh, unit here. So this really is essentially an entire truck and trailer assembly here that we would do training with. One of the projects we have going on down here in 1095, and it's something that I've headed up for a couple of years now, is building a truck from the ground up with the students based on having brand new components. So really we built a brand new truck for the purpose of showing and for the purpose of drag racing. Um, it's sporting a 692 Detroit two-stroke diesel engine, which is supercharged. We've built twin turbos on it and it also has nitrous connected to it for drag racing. So um, this truck does work pretty good. Um, we've spent a lot of time on it and we're gonna continue to make it faster. So throughout uh, the truck shop, in general, all the different labs, there is computer stations that are fully accessible to students based on their student ID and their password. This gets them into um, different areas where they might need to retrieve information electronically for the chassis, for the engine, for an electrical lab, for whatever uh, they're looking for pertaining to the work that needs to be done in the lab. There is usually, in most cases, uh, paper backup information so that it can be found from multiple sources on the computer as well as from hard copies. So here we are standing at the exit of Z1089. One thing I wanted to bring to your attention also is that anytime we need to have something in particular done here or repaired or there's uh, a broken piece of equipment or a piece of equipment required, um, you can also contact uh, Ron Kelly, our truck shop technician and part-time professor here at Fanshawe College. And uh, he'll be more than happy to help you with your queries or questions or maybe even some instruction. So uh, lots of us have skills in various areas and particular areas, so make sure that you uh, overlap with other instructors so that you can get the information you need to be able to be successful here at Fanshawe College. So I wish you very well and welcome back to the truck shop.